And my dad started milking two jerseys back in 1940. So we've been milking Jersey cows here for what, 76, 77 years. As I said, the farm started in about 1880, 1888. My dad started milking by hand. In 1950, we went to electricity. Dad was the first farm, dairy farm in Warren County to milk his cows with electricity. At June the 14th, that completely changed to now the robot does all the milking of the cows. One robot takes care of 60 cows. What happens is, is the cow goes in there, she is being fed grain while she's in there. So, the more milk she produces, the more grain she gets. Well, this grain that these cows are getting through the robot is a very high dense, high energy feed. The feed along the bunk, it's wheat baleage, it's a corn silage, grain, and an alfalfa hay that we got out of Kansas. So, a lot of times, they're gonna make sure they eat this grain, but what happens is, is a cow needs a certain amount of roughage and a certain amount of grain. And if you get too much grain, maybe the grain goes to 50 to 60 to 70 percent of what she's eating, then her stomach gets acidic. So that's when we get acidosis or you can also get ketosis. Yeah. Each one of them has a collar. And as she walks in, the robot identifies her. And the first thing it looks to see is, is, has she been milked within the allotted amount of time? And if that answer is no, then it's gonna open the gate right back up and let her go on out. The brush is gonna go in and the brush is gonna wash her udder. All right, it's gonna do all four quarters. There is a 3D camera that sits right up over, the, over ahead that cow. And the, and the 3D camera locates her on that platform so that robot arm knows where to go. Now it's milked her before, so it knows exactly how high her udder is, exactly where it is, depending on where she's sitting. All right, now, as you'll notice, the brushers are washing, and now it's gonna go in and wash her again. Kentucky regulations state that that cow has to be washed twice before she's milked. Again, if you have a question, please ask. Please do. All right, now it's, it's gonna wash the right front, now it's gonna wash the left front. Now, once it washes, it's gonna, gonna flip out. Now watch for the red laser as the milker comes up and it maps exactly where that udder is. See the red light? All right, now it knows exactly where the teats are. Now the milker is gonna flip out. Oh, she had her leg too close, so it moved. It's all right. Best part about the robot, it never loses its patience. It never gets mad. It doesn't say, oh, I remember you from this morning. You kicked the heck out of me. Look at that. Up, oh, she moved a little bit. Now, if you'll notice, if the cow goes forward or goes back a little bit, the arm's gonna go forward and go back. And that's from the 3D camera. All right, one more. Up, oh, she moved, it meant. All right, the robot will not give up. It will not. <laughs> It will not give up. Come on, there you go. All right, so now it's gonna sit on there and it's gonna milk that cow. But as each quarter gets through, it's gonna take that, it's gonna take that cup off. Now the old milk way that we did it, you kept the milker on until you got through with the cow. So if one quarter was light and it got through before the others did, it didn't matter, you just left it on. So now this way you pull off each quarter. You see that milk's going through there? The robot is checking that milk for three things. It's checking it for temperature, conductivity, and color. If any of those are not right, it will automatically dump the milk onto the ground so that it does not put bad milk into the milk tank with good milk. This is one of the great things about the robot because the robot weighs the cow every time it milks her. Right? Isn't that great? Because what, what, what happens if you don't feel good? You might you know, not eat and you, don't, you lose weight. Or you might have a high temperature. It also takes the temperature of the milk every time it milks the cow. So I've got a temperature. Hey, think about this. How many times do we usually milk a day? Twice, exactly. Have you worked at a dairy farm before? Exactly, twice. We would milk at five o'clock in the morning and we would milk at four o'clock in the evening. We'd milk every day. The robot, 
24 hours a day. It never stops. Some of these cows, I've got one cow today that is projected to milk 107 pounds a day. That's over 12 gallons of milk that cow is going to produce today. But just think about that. The cow that's going to milk 107 pounds of milk today, she's not going through twice. If she went through twice, she'd have to, she'd have to milk out 53 pounds in the morning. She'd have to milk out 53 pounds in the evening. Okay? But these cows are going through five times a day. Some of them are. So now she's milking like 25 pounds or 20 pounds whenever she comes in. There is such less stress. There's 12 fans out there. As you can see, the cows are extremely comfortable. When somebody says, why have you increased milk production by 20%, they all automatically think it's because of the robot. That is the big part of it, but the part of it is because my cows have never been as comfortable as they are now. They have fans on them. They have curtains that I can let down if it gets cold or if it gets rainy. Over in the middle, you can see the red brush. You see that? Hopefully that cow will push up underneath it. Once the cow moves up underneath the brush and she moves it enough, it will actually start to spin. And it kind of just gives her a nice back rub. They love it. Matter of fact, usually once they get under it, the only way you get out of it, get them from out from under it, is another cow push them out from underneath it. Now, if you see over to the far left, up underneath that little shed, that is what is called, there's, you see a red little thing over there? That's a Juno. We call it R2 Mutu. And the R2 Mutu, what it does, every hour, every hour, it goes down through there and it pushes the feed up to the cows. Because as the cows grab a bite over there, along where you see them sticking their heads through, they'll grab a bite and they'll swing it and they'll push the feed out to where they can't reach it. The R2 Mutu goes by every hour and pushes the feed back up to them. They are bedded with a compost bedded pack barn that is sawdust that we bed, bed with. The cows lay on it and then we stir it twice a day so the cows mess, their urine is all worked into the sawdust. And look how dry it looks. See how comfortable they look. See them, see them chewing their cud? These cows, each one of them has a different personality. They're just like people. Some of them you'll go walking out there, and if I got like within you, she would kind of say, that's close enough, and she would walk right off. Some of them, they will go out there and they're like little puppy dogs. They'll come up to you and they'll rub the heads up on your leg. They will not leave you alone. They are, but they're all different. I want you all to see that sign over the top. Every cow in this barn is a lady and we treat her like one. People that are not dairy farmers have a hard time really understanding the closeness that we feel to these animals. We are responsible for them. It is our responsibility to take care of them. And I tell you what, if you could see Miss Dory out here with these cows and these baby calves and everything, if anybody ever wrote again on Facebook that dairy farmers don't take care of their cows, you would be one of the first to jump on there and say, now wait a minute, I know if it's on Facebook it's got to be true but it's not necessarily.